Long Island City in Queens is bounded by Astoria, Sunnyside, Greenpoint, and the East River. Don't confuse Long Island City with Long Island, which is a larger island that Queens and Brooklyn belong to. As a side note, if someone says they're from Long Island, they mean either one of these two counties. Long Island City, also known as LIC, is a stone's throw away from Manhattan, formerly an industrial neighborhood, but now highly gentrified. And today, we're going to talk about this neighborhood. We're going to talk about its history, why it became gentrified, transportation, and what it has to offer in terms of culture and entertainment. Welcome to Urban Caffeine. My name is Thea and you're watching a channel that's slowly going through all the neighborhoods in New York City. And last week I checked the analytics and did you know that half of you watching this video right now are not subscribed? So if you want to support this channel so that we can make more videos, make sure you're subscribed because a channel's growth ensures its longevity. Before LAC was LAC, it was originally made up of several smaller communities to include Hunters Point, Ravenswood, and Dutch Kills. We still use these names today, especially Dutch Kills and Hunters Point. Boundaries of New York City neighborhoods are not always official and can be fuzzy. Sometimes neighborhood boundaries are complex and difficult to pin down. That's because a lot of these are cultural boundaries that change over time. But say you're in Hunter's Point, you can say you're in Hunter's Point, or in LAC, or in Queens. All three are correct answers. Although if you're in Dutch Kills, it's more common to say Dutch Kills than LIC. And that Dutch Kills area is kind of fuzzy because it's borderline Astoria. Anyway, these small communities were consolidated to create Long Island City. And LIC was the seat of government for Queens County until it was moved in 1898. It was moved to Kew Gardens, right smack in the middle of Queens. But even before it was the seat of government for Queens, LIC had always been industrial. Up until the last couple of decades, it's had a lot of manufacturers and a lot of warehouses. It was just a really heavy industrial zone. And we'll cover more about the industrial decline of this area later. But being industrial made sense because of its location. It was on the East River close to Manhattan. Cargo vessels could easily drop off goods here and trains and ferries can pick them up for distribution. In fact, if you go by the water, you can see an original gantry which was restored and preserved. As well as the original Pepsi Cola sign because the Pepsi Cola factory was originally here. So it made sense that this area has a lot of warehouses and manufacturing facilities. However, today, it's a very different story. LSC used to be a very dangerous place to be. Because it was industrial, there weren't a lot of pedestrians and not a lot of people used the streets. And according to our idol, Jane Jacobs, an unused street is a shady street. Needless to say, this neighborhood was known for crime. There was one time I read the story on Reddit how they knew of someone trying to sell a shop in LIC like way back when. They were selling in the shop for $2,000, but nobody would take it just because the area was so dangerous. Today, Long Island City is one of the most expensive places to live in Queens. A two bedroom condominium by the water is rented out for about $6,500. I'm guessing that $2,000 shop that they were trying to sell is probably in the millions by now, but it depends on the location in LIC. Starting from the 90s, LIC has quickly become more residential and commercial. Former factories became residential lofts, and new high-rise apartment buildings are popping up like mushrooms. But why? Why is LIC all of a sudden gentrified? Here are five reasons. One, the obvious, it's so close to Manhattan. People can live here and enjoy Manhattan without the Manhattan rent. But I don't know, in 10 years, it might as well be the same price as Manhattan. Secondly, manufacturing declined in the 90s, so buildings were considered for repurposing. There are still industrial warehouses and manufacturing in operation, but not a lot, especially near the waterfront. So the closer you are to the waterfront, the more residential areas and new buildings that you'll see. The further away you are, the more you'll see warehouses and other industries. Third, very important, zoning came into play. The city rezoned parts of Long Island City. This allowed for high-density residential and mixed-use buildings. If you've watched urbanism channels and other videos, you'd know that zoning is a major key in creating walkable communities. Fourth, a lot of investment was made in transit and the waterfront. After all, people love green space and easy access to places. 
I'll talk more about the different transportation options available in this area, which is quite diverse. And lastly, which I'll also cover later, is the presence of cultural institutions and creative industries. A lot of artists are in LIC. It makes sense because warehouses convert well into lofts that make for great artist studios. But there's something else that makes LIC highly appealing. Actually, two things. These two things are up there on a New Yorker's wish list side by side by in-unit washer and dryer and centralized air. These two things are a Trader Joe's and a Target. If you don't live in New York City, let me put it this way. If living in New York were ice cream, great public transit in your neighborhood would be the cherry on top, having a Trader Joe's would be like syrup, and Target would be sprinkles. LIC is what I would call a New York Sunday. If you look at the subway system in New York City, the New York City subway is not a centralized transit system, meaning there's no single station where most stations meet up. Unlike Zurich, which has the Zurich HB, which is short for Hauptbahnhof. So if you get lost, try to make your way to Zurich HB so you can find the train that you're looking for. But not being centralized doesn't mean there aren't any major train hubs in NYC. These are areas where you'll find major train lines converge. Examples are Times Square and this area of Lower Manhattan, downtown area of Brooklyn, and in Queens, you have Long Island City. LIC is well connected by having the EMG7 and RNW trains. From LIC, you can easily get to Manhattan, Brooklyn, and other parts of Queens. If you checked out my G train video, you'll know that getting to and from the other boroughs without involving Manhattan is a pain. But in LIC, you at least have easy access to three boroughs. Not only does it have excellent subway access, but it also has two ferry ports and the Long Island Railroad Station. Although the Hunters Point LIRR is a bit limited with its service. In the last decade, the waterfront of LAC has been developed. It consists of Gantry Plaza State Park and Hunters Point South Park, but both blend together as one unified waterfront. This green space has boardwalks, playgrounds, dog parks, and even a sand volleyball pit. In terms of art, LIC is home to MoMA PS1, which is a satellite of the Museum of Modern Art in Manhattan. This museum exhibits innovative and experimental art. LIC also has the Culture Lab that offers free concerts in the summer. All I can say is that while LIC is bomb, just because it has great transit option, a great waterfront, and has a Trader Joe's and Target, what I'm more concerned about is the possibility of a lot of people being priced out. While there are low income housing options available in LIC for those that qualify, it's still a lottery. But I do know people who actually win these lotteries, so it's real. Affordable and low-income housing does exist in New York and it's integrated into these newer buildings. A lot of these newer apartment buildings have a certain percentage allotted for either affordable housing and or low-income housing. But these units are a lottery. But there's a very real chance of getting one if you qualify. But still, not everybody can win a lottery and so a lot of people are being priced out of LIC. That's my two cents. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you want to take part of this channel's growth, consider a Patreon membership. Not only will you be helping out this channel, but you also gain access to exclusive videos where I talk about things as a creator and what I'm up to in New York City. Thank you to all the lovely current Patreon members, and thank you everyone for watching this video. Until next time, happy New Yorking!